Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of mathy time feels, exploring those songs that are just kind of difficult to groove to. You can't quite get a grasp of what's going on rhythmically. Today we're going to be checking out Mouse on the Keys. This comes. Uh, this is the song Leviathan which comes off of their 2015 The Flowers of Romance album. Let's dive in. See what Mouse on the Keys is bringing to the table today. So this isn't 4-4, four, four, but it is, I feel it in a very slow 4-4, four, four, and there's a lot of polyrhythmic stuff going on too. They jumped right into that too. Beat one of the song, just bonkers. The drummer's absolutely killing it here. I mean, just a melodic, fast-moving, aggressive drum work, full toms, but you hear that hi-hat work too. Opening it up, going for the crash, yeah. Still 4-4, four, four. every section's been 4-4. Four, four. Masterclass at changing up how 4 feels. Drummer breaking us up into groups of three and three and two, although it feels more like six and six and four. Really working with these 16th note subdivisions. Oh, the, the funky syncopations from the piano. This drum work. The swelling of the uh, melody. Yeah, okay. To four. Ooh, it's really interesting. The last section was in three. It was just a couple of bars of it, though. Uh, but, oh, the harmony here. Yeah. Uh, a tuplet accent pattern. That the weight, the intensity of these very low bassy tones against the lightness of these uh, not staccato notes, but just you know shorter, not as resonant. <laughs> just hitting that snare. A, a huge departure from the drum work we've seen throughout. A mass simplification for maximum weight.
It's interesting too that last section with the rising piano line our accents were on beats 4 and 1. So it feels very uh, weighted towards a specific moment. Very tasteful flourishes to the standard drum pattern here. Popping off again. I like the harmonic shift here, there's beauty. Jeez. Absolute masterclass. This is another one of those where, like, I feel like nothing I can say is going to do any of this justice. And there's just a large part of me that's like, you heard it. You know that was awesome. I don't have a job to do on this one. <laughs> I can't explain it. Uh, that was, that was, that was, mm, that's the whole sentence right there. That was. Okay. Let's just start with like the obvious stuff. Cause that's where my brain's sitting right now time 93 percent of this song i i, I made that up <laughs> a majority of this song though is in four four as far as i can tell there are only four bars give or take uh, maybe it was eight bars it was a short section of three four and even that might have been 4-4 in the tempo that we originally held. That is to say that the tempo decreased a little bit when we shifted to the three pulses. And I, I would almost guarantee it, given the rest of the song, that if I continued to conduct out the 4-4, it still would have wrapped up in the same area. And when we came back to 1 after, you know, geez, I don't know, 7.5 bars of 4, I don't know how that would have worked out. I'm not mathing that right. <laughs> um, but eventually, that phrase of what felt like 3-4 would have lined up with 4-4, and they both would have landed on beat 1 at the beginning of the next section, which definitely was a return to that 4-4. Um, but yeah, most of the songs in 4-4. You know, this is what I love about this. This is like this is like Meshuggah, where you listen to it and you're like, I don't know what's going on. This is super complex. What in the world's happening? There's there's pulses everywhere. The phrasing is bonkers and a asymmetric. I don't get this. And then the band's like, nah, dude, it's just 4-4. Duh. I mean, it's like the most basic time signature. Oh, almost all music's written in 4-4, four, four, and so is this one. And you're just like, nah, dude. Nah. But it is. And that's why, you know, normally I've just, mm, yeah, that's 4-4. Four, four. But I really wanted to conduct it out and have that visual showcase um, in case anybody couldn't feel that four pulse beat. In case anybody was listening to this and like, dude, I have no idea what you're talking about. This is not 4 I really wanted to showcase that um, because it is the heartbeat of a majority of this track, but it's it's invisible. It sits on the outskirts of what you're listening to. It's more implied than stated. And that's what I like about it. Um, it's not that I had to feel a, 
a time feel that isn't there. I've done that many times in the past. I'll say, oh, you know, this is a five and I'll conduct it out or maybe I'll bob my head. You can count the five with me, but people have corrected me in the comments like, no, dude, that's not five. That's just four, four. And I go back and listen. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. It probably is four, four, but I was feeling a five pulse in that same you know, time frame that a four was going on, I was feeling a faster five. Um, and it, it's not like that here where I'm feeling a, a polyrhythm that isn't present. It is present. It's just being passed around everywhere. Every beat has a, an impact, a, um, an accent on it. It's just that you don't find that in the same instrument all the time. You might get a bass kick on beat one and then beat two is going to have an accented guitar. No, there's no guitars in here. A piano play. And then you're going to get an accented like crash cymbal on beat three. And then another piano is going to play like a low chord on beat four. And so every beat is getting an emphasis within the larger frame, but you really have to absorb all of that and know what you're looking for um and that's i think that was the toughest part of it because when the song kicked off i was like whoa dude this is this is going to take me a second and i don't, I don't want to pat i mean i, I kind of do want to pat myself on the back but i did pick up on it rather quickly but it did take me a second. It was not something that was immediately obvious. Uh, and I think that this, like I mentioned, is just an absolute masterclass in making 4-4 four, four interesting. And that's not to say that, you know, if anything less than this isn't interesting. But I always find this to be like peak interest. It's one of those things that when you tell people, yeah, that's 4-4. Four, four. You get that, you either get a shock, like, no, what? Or you get disbelief. Nah, dude, of course it's not. You're, you're joking with me. Um, because it just, it doesn't seem like it. And I always love that type of reaction when it comes to meter, when you just absolutely go against the grain and push the, the time signature as far towards the edge as you can. But what I find most compelling about this song is that it doesn't reach any avant-garde areas. And unlike Mashuga, I don't think there's a lot of polymeter going on here. At least not on the totally obvious surface level. With a lot of Mashuga, the only way to figure out it's in 4-4 four four is when you look at like a 20-bar phrase and you're like, oh, there's 80 beats in here. Yeah, you can sub you can subdivide that into, uh, you know, uh, twenty bars of four. Yeah, so obviously it's in four four. But when you're listening to it, you don't really get that four pulse anywhere. And so it's four four theoretically, and that's not a blanket statement for all of Mashuga's music. But the limited exposure I've had to them at three four songs, maybe tops, uh, that seems to be rather consistent to me. Where the four is more of a it's more of a thing that they wrote down to say, yeah, our music's in 4-4, but I'd actually be really surprised if they feel it out in that way because their music tends to make more sense to me anyways with varying pockets of uh, beats. And if you wanted me to play it, that's how I would play. I would not be counting 4-4. That would just be too much complexity to keep track of. Whereas this, though, this feels very much at home. I can still find that 4 pulse in here. And that's what I like about it. It pushes the time signature to an extreme, but doesn't cross a threshold to the point where the original time signature is missing from the song, from the way that it sounds. Um, and I really love that about it. You know, I bring this up often, but, you know, it's, it's about... Uh, I bring it up so often, I forgot the phrase. It's about moderation. Right, I do like some really simple stuff. I do like some really complex stuff, but the the music that's going to sit with me for a long time, that's really going to affect me and have me walking away like, whoa, what did I just listen to? It's the ones that meet in the middle. They don't push things too far, but they don't ever play it safe 
either. And that's what this track is doing. This puts Mouse on the Keys on my radar. I've heard the name before. I don't know if I've heard a song from them before. But I want to listen to this album now. Especially since this is technically the first track. There's a 40 second intro prior to this. But this is pretty much the first thing you're going to hear when you turn this album on. And I'm sold. I want to hear what comes next. <laughs> um, aside from the rhythm, though, I do want to touch on the drum work. Just... The dude puts in work. He puts the work in the term drum work. It is just... Bonkers. I'm emphasizing words in ways I've never on this channel... <laughs> Um, this dude is a beast. It's not even just the plethora of sounds that are thrown in. You know, interestingly enough, yesterday we checked out a song that also had a lot of drum hits in it. Uh, the band was Piron, uh, and the song was not going to Mars. And I also commented on just how ridiculous the drummer was. But what I like about this is, again, it's about the moderation. I enjoyed the drum work from yesterday. It was mind-boggling, and it definitely got some stank face out of me a couple times. But this takes that, that raw efficiency of cramming so many notes in such a small amount of time, but finds an elegance to it. It is aggressive and and very abrasive of a sound there is a lot of drum work going on and drums to me are attack they don't really have too much resonance you can't hold a drum note out and so this somehow comes off as soft despite being so many attacks all the time I don't know if that's per if that's production. I don't know if that's the drum kit. I don't know if that's a specific type of drum sticks. I have no idea how they achieved it. Maybe it is purely from the composition. The choice of what to hit, the lack of repetition in any of it. It feels like he is always moving around the kit. If he hit uh, you know, a mid tom, he's not allowed to hit it for five more <laughs> <laughs> five more parts of the the kit before you can come back to it you know uh there, there's just this constant movement and momentum but also when you take into account some of the pitch elements uh you know snares and toms are pitched drums cymbals technically are pitched too but you can't really change that on the fly but you can take a drum key and reduce or increase the tension on the drum head I think, um, and that is going to change how high or low the pitch of the drum is. That's how we have a high, middle, low, and floor tom. And go do 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 do. You can have this descending pitch thing. Um, and so when we take all of this plus the cymbals, they're they're kind of pitched, right? I kind of I have a hard time hearing them pitched, but they are higher pitched than toms. So. I don't know. Anyways, when you put all this together, it's very melodic. There are changing pitches, and we're not focused on any specific rhythmic cadence like most drums, uh, most drum patterns are. This is focused on movement across the kit, almost like playing it like a, a xylophone, where each one is a specific note, and you need to hit them in a specific order to play a melody. And I love that and i honestly think that that's part of what goes into softening the sound is kind of pulling away from the repetition of a standard metric uh pattern but i'm also thinking about <laughs> the raw skill that goes into this not just the composition side of hey you guys are playing this light piano stuff let me go ham on the drum kit um and do it with style but also the endurance required to keep this up for the practically the entirety of the runtime. Uh, it is just, it is a jaw dropping thing, and it's one of those songs. I listen to it, and my first reaction is I have to see this live. I need a live cam, I need drum cam footage. I don't care if it's rehearsal, I don't care if it's a show. 
I need to see the drummer doing this because what I have in my head, imagining, uh, you know, some of the patterns I picked up, and I, I'm not, I'm not going to say I picked up a lot of them. They're very fast ideas. <laughs> If you told me to transpose it from memory, it's not going to be really accurate at all. But when I was listening to it, you know, I hear, okay, hit the tom, then he hit the, the cymbal, and this dude's got to have three arms. It's just mind-blowing. It's it's the same kind of thing uh, when we checked out uh, Exercises in Futility 5. And I'm listening to that cymbal work and the snare work, and I'm like, this is not possible with two hands. And I'm so glad y'all sent me <laughs> the music. Uh, no, it wasn't a music. It was a drum cam. For that song because i mean it's it's just entrancing to watch drummers do this to use the full kit constantly it's just yeah I'm, I'm blown away i honestly am blown away by the drum work in here and i think it's one of the best drum parts i've heard on the channel and i guarantee man i, I no lie here I probably watched that drum cam footage of Exercises in Futility 5 about every few months, two to three times a year probably. I'll just It'll just dawn on me and I'll be like, dude, I got to watch that video again. If I find a live video of Leviathan, it's probably gonna, I'm probably going to do the same thing. Every few months, I'm just going to be like, dude, I remember that. I got to go see that video again because it's just it's mind-blowing but it's so gorgeous at the same time and i think that's it's again it's finding that middle point the moderation of aggression and complexity and soothing melodic beauty and it does it so well now this song also getting away from rhythmic and complex ideas a lot of the song is focused on weight we find that weight at the beginning with those crazy drum lines, drum runs, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> a drum riff. <laughs> um, but we can also listen to the way the pianos play. Particularly, I mentioned early on in the track that there's these really bassy, resonant, heavy chords being played off on the left piano. But that it's juxtaposed with these light little runs on the right piano and uh it was almost like trying to find dexterity in uh, a mass a, a huge mass like uh, a giant trying to you know do ballet without shaking the entire earth i'll never say that again <laughs> that is a very precise description that i don't think i'll ever have the opportunity to think of again um and I love the balance there. But we also have an intensity in the harmony. There is a darkness to a lot of the harmonic progression in here, to the chord progressions. While we might have these dexterous, beautiful melodies on top, the chords underneath are weighty. They, they to me, feel like a, a darkness, but not one of, of sorrow Kind of like one of, of failure, of, of wanting to do something, but not being able to. It, it very much is a can't. Like, I don't have an opportunity to do this. Uh, and kind of feeling down about that. But what I love is we have an inversion of this. There's a point in the middle of the song when everything shifts to quarter notes. And it is just this constant quarter note attack. Very heavy, very weighty but not chaotic, not bumbling, like, like the massive drum runs that we had before. It's a bit more controlled here. We have reduced it down to just what is necessary to deliver this feeling. And after this is where the drummer began to incorporate more standard patterns. We got away from those wild runs, uh, shifting from a melodic drum style to a metric one, keeping the beat like a metronome would. Um, there's also at this point less of a disparity, I think, between the lower end piano chords and the higher end piano melody. Uh, a lot of the darkness had been replaced or was gradually being replaced with brighter, more optimistic chord progressions. Uh, and they began to match that dexterity from the right hand, uh, the right side piano. And things started to line up in a way that 
got rid of the complexity and found a purity of beauty, a more traditional style of it. I don't know what the song is supposed to represent, and without lyrics, it really is up to us, the audience, to interpret it, unless Mouse on the Keys have, you know, released an official statement about it. But I do love this progression from chaotic and dark and uh, contrasty, very complex, to finding simplicity uh, and, and pulling the beauty out from, uh, from the earlier moments and allowing it to resonate in a space that it feels more natural within instead of creating this dichotomy between the, the darkness and the beauty. We actually found the beauty and extracted it and allowed it to be in a space that felt more harmonious to it. Everything lightened up from there. And I think it was a beautiful way to end the song. Granted, I think this little narrative falls apart, though, because we do get a little quick drum run, much like the earlier uh, melodic work at the end. We get a, a little burst of that right before the ending. So I'm not sure how to interpret that other than just a neat way to pull the song into the, the outro, the final 10 seconds or so. But... uh yeah, I mean, it was just gorgeous. You know, the beginning of the song is jaw-dropping. And as it goes on, the more I listen to it and I feel it, uh, you know, metamorphosizing. That's not a word. <laughs> Changing, altering, evolving into where it goes at the end. It was just a gorgeous transition. Absolutely lovely stuff. Now, as I said, there are no lyrics. I think this is going to wrap up my thoughts on the song then. Gorgeous narrative, beautiful melodies, and jaw-dropping, excellent drum work. I mean, what more could you ask for, honestly? It's just, it's, this song's a total package for me. And like I said, it makes me want to check out more. This is how you start an album off. Those are my thoughts. Mouse on the Keys, Leviathan. What do you think of Mouse on the Keys, a small thing, the song Leviathan? Wait a second, we checked this out before, haven't we? I know this is going to extend the video out for just one second. It, oh no, we checked out Forgotten Children. I wonder if we did this song on live stream then. I remember making this joke. A mouse on the keys playing a song so big. No, nope. does not seem like we had them on live stream. Okay, I don't know then. Anyways, these are my thoughts. <laughs> on Mouse on the Keys, Leviathan, what are yours? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything that you would like to add on to what I said? Correct me on or just add your own ideas to the, the conversation. Maybe you have a totally different perspective on things. Maybe, you know... You heard something I didn't, and it can completely change the perspective. Who knows? Toss it all down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that wraps it up for this video. We do have another one coming up next. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. We're going to wrap this week's theme up. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to. And have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.